In today's tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through how to draw St. Pio of Pietrelcina, also known as Padre Pio. We celebrate his feast day on September 23rd, and I'm going to be walking you through how to draw him step by step using simple lines and simple shapes. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to be drawing in an egg shape for Padre Pio's head. So Close to the top of my paper, I'm going to start off with a wider curve for the wider part of my egg-shaped head. And it's gonna be a little bit more narrow, kind of like an egg, where his chin and beard are gonna go. And I have it slightly more angled towards the left, but you, of course, can do any head shape or any size that you wish in your drawing. Feel free to customize it however you wish. I'm just kind of here to guide you through it if you need a little bit more assistance. And any lines that I don't need, I can just use my eraser to kind of tweak or get rid of. But that is the overall shape of his head, kind of a little bit wider on the top and a little bit more narrow and pointed where you want his chin and beard to go later. So on the left side of that egg shape, I'm going to put one line that comes down off towards the left, and I'm gonna put in a, another line angled down, but towards the right. And these are gonna be the lines for his shoulders. You can make those as long or short as you wish in your artwork. And we're gonna be putting in two more diagonal lines, slightly longer, um, also angled downwards. One on the left side for this left part of his arm, and one on the right side for this arm. And where I end these lines, that is where I'm going to be putting in the bend of his elbows. So we're going to be putting in yet another set of diagonal lines, but these ones are, be, are going to be coming in and they're going to create the bottom parts of his sleeves. So I'm going to put one coming in from this left side right here, and I'm going to put another one that comes in from this right side. And I want to make sure that I'm leaving a little bit of space in between where these lines end. I think I'm gonna erase this edge right here, but you can make those sleeves as big or as small as you wish in yours. We are going to be finishing up the bottom of these sleeves. So we're gonna start off by putting in one line that comes up like this, and it's gonna come over towards the left like that, but I wanna stop before I reach that side of the arm. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm going to do one line that comes up for this edge of the sleeve here, and I'm gonna do a line that comes up and towards the side like this to finish off that sleeve opening over there. And in between these sleeves, we're gonna be putting in his hands. So his hands are kind of like a nice U shape. So I'm going to put one U over here on this left side. So that is creating this hand right here. And I'm gonna put another U that's tucked behind. So I'm kind of starting at the top of this sleeve over here. And I'm gonna move that line until I hit the hand and kind of imagine that I'm continuing it on the opposite side like this. So it looks like the hands are kind of overlapped a little bit. So you often see him wearing gloves in some of his pictures. So I'm gonna be putting in these um, gloves by adding in just a simple up and down line like this across each hand. And one time when I was visiting a church in Scottsdale, Arizona. I actually got to see a set of his gloves in the church that I was visiting, which was pretty cool to be able to see something that belonged to Padre Pio. We're gonna finish up these hands by adding in some fingers that are sticking out past the gloves. So we're gonna be adding in three lines on each hand. So the lines just kind of go across like this 
and that separates that hand into four tall fingers. We don't necessarily see the thumb the way that his hands are folded right now, but if you wanted to add in a hint of a thumb, you're more than welcome to on yours. So we are gonna be working on the sides of his robe. So it's just two slightly diagonal lines that come down kind of close to where his elbows are. So however long you want the robe to be, that's how long you're going to draw those lines. So I have one that's coming down this way and I'm gonna have one that's slightly angled down and towards the right, kind of like this. And I just wanna make sure that they are close to matching up down at the bottom. And I wanna connect these two lines with a slightly curved line, kind of like a smile. So I'm gonna connect one side to the opposite side with that slightly curved smiling line and that finishes off the bottom of his clothing. If you wanna add in feet, you can, but since he has a long robe on, I'm just gonna have it covering up the bottom of his feet in my example. So we're gonna be putting in this little shawl or fabric here. So what we're gonna do is close to the top of the head, we're going to put one line that comes from the head and ends at the elbow right over here. And we're gonna do the same thing on this opposite side. You're gonna start at the head and do a line that comes over towards the elbow like this. We're gonna do another line on each side for this inner part. So you'll leave a little bit of space, but starting near the chin, you'll do one line that comes down and stops at his arm. But we wanna continue that line on the opposite side. So we're just skipping past the hand and drawing a line that comes down as long as you want it to be. And then we're gonna connect it to this side of his body like this. And if you want, you could even make it slightly wider so it looks like it's coming past the edge of his body or you can just put that line in and call it good. We're gonna do the same thing up here. We're gonna leave a little bit of space between um, that shoulder um, and this edge. So we're gonna do a line that comes down and you're gonna stop at the hand and continue it on the opposite side. I'm gonna have him match here and then draw a line that comes off towards the side like this. Again, you can extend it past the edge of his body a little bit if you wish, or you can just leave it like that. So we're gonna put in a little hint of a sleeve here. So down at this bottom corner of my sleeve, I'm gonna do a line that comes up, kind of like a letter V shape um, for this inside edge of the sleeve. If you wanna do that on this side, you can, but I don't have it in my example. We're gonna finish off his clothing um, over here by his chin. We're gonna do just a little line here. That way we can see a little bit of his chest kind of peeking out there, chest and neck. And then we're gonna draw one line here kind of in between his hands. So above his hand, I'm gonna put a line that kind of goes across like this. And it has these um, longer pieces that are hanging down. So I'm gonna put one that starts kind of near his sleeve and hand on this left side. And I'm gonna draw a line that comes down past his little shawl, stops. I'm gonna have it come in a little bit to create this bottom edge. And then I'm gonna draw a line that comes up like this. So there's one long piece and I have this slightly shorter one here. So I'm gonna do a line that comes down from underneath the shawl, stops, goes over towards the left a little bit and then connects right there. So we're gonna finish up with his head. So over here on this right side of his body, I want you to put a curved line, think kind of like um, if you were writing out the letter D, that backside of a capital letter D kind of creates the similar type of curve for that ear. And I'm gonna put a little line here, that way it looks like the top ridge of um, that ear. 
we're gonna be working on his hair next. So his hair kind of has like this zigzag that creates this top peak. So it kind of reminds me of like a lightning bolt or a really stretched out letter Z. So I'm gonna start here on this upper left part of the head and I'm gonna do one line that comes up towards the middle like this. It's gonna come down to make a little point back up towards the top of the head. And there's my letter Z. But I also am going to do a curved line that kind of matches the curve of the back of the head towards the ear and I'm gonna stop when I hit the ear. And I'm gonna connect it to the ear like this. So that's creating his hair at the top of his head. We're gonna put in a curved line for this top part of his beard. So where your hair ended, you're going to do a curved line that comes down, but not all the way down. It's gonna stop kind of when you reach like the area like around the shoulders. And you just wanna make sure you're leaving a little bit of space for that bottom part of the beard to kind of be showing like this. So for his eyes, um, I did kind of like a line with a little U underneath for the eye. I did really simple eyes. So if you wanna change it up, feel free to do so. Kind of about the center of his face in line with his ears. I'm gonna put in two lines. So one over here leave a space and then put another line here. And then on kind of off towards the left side, I'm gonna do a little U shape underneath each line. And that creates his little eyeballs kind of looking off this direction. In between these eyes that I put in, I'm gonna put a curved line for the bridge of his nose like this. And then I'm gonna do a curved line, kind of like a smile to start the underside of his nose. Then I'm gonna do a curved line over here to create this edge of that nostril. And I'm gonna connect it to the main part of his nose over there. For his mouth, in between his nose and his beard, I'm going to put a curved line, like a smile here. And that creates this smiling mouth and the bottom part of his mustache. And what I'm gonna do is on this left side, I'm gonna have a line that comes up and connects to his nose. And I'm gonna do a curved line to create the top part of his mustache on the right side, but have it come down to create the edge of his mouth like this. His eyebrows are a little angled. So above each eye, I'm going to start off with a slightly angled line like this, and then add another line that comes down like that. So I'll show you on this side. I'll do one that comes down at an angle here and then a slightly smaller line for that outside edge. But I want them a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna add a similar line on top on each side to make them a little bit thicker. And unless there are any other details that you want to add to your Padre Pio, you can go ahead and you can start to color him. I'm gonna be using markers to work on mine. And when I use markers, I like to use pens kind of like this to trace around my pencil art before I color it in. You of course can use your favorite art supplies that you have on hand and feel free to follow along if you wanna match my coloring.
Thank you so much for drawing along with me. I would love to see how your drawings of Padre Pio turned out. Feel free to tag me on social media. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Amy Heisey and I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials here on my channel every week. Another way that you can help support my channel is through my Buy Me a Coffee page and art supply wish list. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for drawing along with me and I'll see you in the next video.